Call the Thursday, July 28, 2022 uh, City Commission meeting to order. All five commissioners are present. First item on the order of business is the consideration of the approval of the minutes from the regular meeting on July 14th, 2022. Any questions, changes, or comments? I have none. I think we should approve them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then they will stand as... I'll third it. They'll stand as uh, pres approved as presented. Now we'll hear the financial statement for June 2022. Mr. Rupp. Thank you. This is a summary of revenue and expenditure activities for the City of Hayes month ended June 30, 2022. Revenues in June totaled 11,282,914. That's an increase of 4,596 compared to the same period as last year. Some notable areas of increased revenue, the ad valorem and motor vehicle property tax distribution was received at the beginning of June this year as opposed to May last year. And that distribution of 2,453 this year contributes to that large increase mentioned. Another factor adding to the increase was the receipt of 1,582,862 in ARPA funds. That is the second tranche of that received. And residential and business water consumption was up 13% and 10% respectively for June. The conservation tier was up 49%. Year to date, total June consumption and revenue are flat. Revenue, there were no significant revenue decreases. Expenditures in June totaled 6331399 That's a decrease of 426000 compared to this time last year. Some notable increases of expenditures. CV expenditures were up 312452 due to the start of the debt service on the North Vine Corridor project. Parks improvement increased 16000 as a result of the Larks Park batting cage project. The purchase of signal light components increased equipment expense 19000 in the Public Works Service Division. And special parks and rec expenditures rose 35000 for the concrete work done in the Frontier East parking lot. Notable areas of decreased expenditure, social, social services fell 84000 due simply to the timing of payment of their allocation. Holly patch work on streets at this time of year ago dropped special highway expenditures 22000 And you may have noticed a credit of... 602,000 in capital projects. This was the developer's payment on their share of the 230th and 55th project. Month to date, general fund sales tax, tax collections were at 810,043. That's an increase of 93,000 or 13% compared to last year. Year to date, general fund sales tax collections are at 4,527,455, up 471,000 or 11.6% from a year ago. That makes that six month average also up 11.6, which is an increase of 1.78 when compared to a year ago. Month to date county sales tax collections were at 98,000, that's up 12%. Year to date county sales taxes at 550,410. The report of top 10 quarter to date sales tax collections by classification was up 188,000 or 8.6%. Those top 10 represent 74% of the total sales tax collections for the running quarter. Finally, the portfolio certificates of deposit on June 30, 2022 totaled four, 4 million with a weighted average interest rate of six basis points, up two basis points from a year ago. Total par value of the U.S. Treasuries is 60,954,000 with an average rated, weighted average yield and maturity of 61 basis points, up 55 basis points from a year ago. So we are shifting from CDs to T-bills and T-notes for the time being. We'll see how long that lasts. Total balance of the money market account on six, June 30 was three and a half million with a current yield of five basis points and total investments are up five and a half million. Make a motion to approve the June financial report. Second. Motion by Commissioner Musil, second by Commissioner Burgess. Any questions or comments for Kim? It's going to have a tough year next year keeping trend yeah you have to work harder Kim we yep. did it last year let's do it again I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right then I will, I will call for a vote all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. passes 5-0 thank you Kim and then citizen comments no nothing on the consent agenda um, so the next item on the order of business uh, I will declare a public hearing to consider the creation of the 4th and 4th Rural Street Housing Incentive District open. Mr. Rupp. Good evening, Commissioners. Kim Rupp, Director of Finance. We're at the finish line of the application for a Rural Housing Incentive District 
from Michael D. Graham Rentals, LLC. That is a name change from what we have been presenting as turnkey properties. Uh, it's for administrative purposes only and no bearing on the, this public hearing and it covers the same property, same, same real estate. Uh, you previously adopted a resolution making those housing needs findings and de determinations. Excuse me. <coughs> and we sent that resolution to the Secretary of Commerce for approval. He did move that forward by approving that with a later de letter dated May 20th. I'm having a terrible time talking to him. <laughs> the next step in the statutory process is this public hearing to hear public comment on the consideration of establishing that RHID. After voting to close the public hearing, the Commission will consider an ordinance establishing the RHID, adopting the development plan, and authorizing the execution of the development agreement. The development agreement is entered into between the city and the developer to govern the rights and responsibilities of the parties. That ordinance will have a 30-day veto period. This project involves construction of four structures containing an aggregate total of 36 apartments located at 4th and Fort, directly west of the former Washington Elementary School. This is a drawing of how they plan to situate it on the property. Uh, at this point, it still bears city approval, but this is what they have planned at this time uh, with a look similar to this. The cost of the project is estimated to be $3.436 million, with uh, 414500 of that eligible for RHID reimbursement. They're termed to be 25 years. Um, property tax over that 25 years is estimated to be 622512 So to this point, we've pretty much beat you over the head with this. It's <laughs> Nothing has changed. Nobody has changed anything to this point. So uh, being still in the... In the public hearing, you'll hear any public comment if there are any. After that, we'll need a motion to close, and then we will ask for approval on the ordinance. <clears throat> Next section of the public hearing, then, will be public comment. <laughs> Seeing none, hearing none, I will ask for a motion to close. So moved. Seconded. Motion by Commissioner Jacobs, second by Commissioner Burgess. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Passes 5 0 to close a public hearing. All right. <coughs> I move we approve the ordinance number 4013, establishing the 4th and 4th Street Rural Housing Incentive District, adopting the development plan, and authorizing the execution of the development agreement. Second. Second by Commissioner, or for <laughs> motion by Commissioner Jacobs, second by Commissioner Burgess. Uh, any questions or comments? That's a good deal. Very good, good deal. Good deal. Good deal. All right, then I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Thank, Thank you. Kim. Thanks, Kim. All right, and now we'll move on to the ordinance establishing the 4th and 4th Street Rural Housing Incentive District, adopting the development plan and authorizing the execution. That's what, you just did. That's what we just did. Yeah. <laughs> you and Kim, well, then I won't do Kim, Kim snuck it in. in you, the I was just, uh, just uh, going to uh, say, uh, Kim just slipped that right in well, there. Well, uh, problem. It was really my fault. Something's going on in here. Too. <laughs> <laughs> the rooters and the rups are not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just start over. Okay. <laughs> Progress. Progress. Good evening, Colin Belzer, Assistant City Manager, for this uh, month's progress reports. Public Works has been busy doing street repairs. Here's 1100 block of Oak Street. Uh, it's nice to see that we put that back to brick the way... Um, it was originally built, so there's a during and then after. Did some curb and gutter repairs on 20th and Fort. Oh, real quick, I wanted to mention, I think there was 3,000 3, bricks that they uh, put in there. Wow. And I love it. It looks yeah, great. That's nice. I was going to go out next week and count those to make sure you get that right. <laughs> <laughs> if it's wrong, Jesse's... Uh, I'll let Jesse know. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they've also been doing some stormwater base and sidewalk repairs. So you can see in the photo on the left, the stormwater base and concrete's heaved up. And so we're going and replacing those to, to mitigate that tripping hazard. The Hayes Fire Department received their new self-contained breathing apparatus uh, equipment, and they've been uh, training with those and spending time to learn the new equipment. The Bigelschmidt Sports Complex, we did... Uh, 
do an initiative to get field sponsors. Uh, we have two, but I heard today that there's another business that saw, went out there and saw it and has some interest. So I think more people when they get out there will see that. It looks pretty sharp in my opinion. Um, then reliable is the other. <clears throat> A new restroom facility has been delivered and set to the west of the splash pad. Dirt work and sidewalk construction will need to be completed prior to opening for the public. Park staff installed new batteries on the welcome to hay signs. And then actually the east sign had some damage during the storm, so it had to be repaired and remounted. At Massey Park, park staff repaired the paver wall. Wooden traffic bollards were installed just west of the shelter uh, in East Frontier Park to prevent turf grass damage from vehicles. Detective J.B. Burkholder with the police department read to children as part of the Hayes Public Library's summer reading program. And then the police department also hosted the Moms Club of Hayes where they toured the facility and then learned about uh, what the police department does and got to see a police car in the, in the process. Water departments, um, this actually happened on 4th of July. So our guys came out and did a, had to do a leak repair <clears throat> at 5th and Milner. And also in July, they had a couple others. Here's the pictures at 2500 block of Marjorie and then 16th and Milner. Those are not the kind of fireworks you want to see on the 4th of July. No, no. We got good crews though, to, committed to do that, of course. Um, Water guys also can do concrete work, so here they are doing some storm water, or some around the meter lids. And then Water Smart Wally uh, did participate in the Wild West Festival Parade. For CVB, the CVB sponsored food for the Sternberg Museum's Teacher Appreciation Event, which celebrated the collaboration of the museum with Defiance Brewing on the Gillicus Island, um, which commemorates the 70th anniversary of the fish within a fish fossil. Very good. I suggest you try it if you're into the uh, beer. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> Kite Festival, CV did bring in the Great American Kites and Events. Um, Wooden didn't cooperate the whole day, but it did towards the end, and I think a lot of people had a lot of fun. And that's a week we had wind like crazy. And like then it week, stopped. And then <laughs> <laughs> There's a person with weather experience who I heard from a source that knows them that it was really rare not to have wind that day <laughs> <laughs> and come out east <laughs> so rare <laughs> the tour to capellan uh, or tour chapels uh occurred this uh month they had 198 registered riders including the city manager obviously lance armstrong <laughs> <laughs> um it was their biggest event uh so far the 198 riders and then they also added a 55 passenger bus tour, which sold out. So it's definitely growing in popularity. CVB sponsored the Larks game, along with Sternberg Museum and Downtown Hayes Development Corporation. That was the best throw any T-Rex has ever made. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> for a first pitch. Yeah, the arc looks pretty good for the short arms. Yeah. <laughs> it's, pretty it's pretty good form. <laughs> The CVB helped organize optional activities for the Leadership Kansas group which is here in town. Um, included was, of course, a visit to Sternberg, uh, presentation on the history of Hayes, and then polka demonstration to promote the upcoming 50th uh, Oktoberfest. Janet Kuhn with CVB presented, uh, represented Hayes in Pittsburgh this month at the 49th Annual Kansas Shrine Bowl. As part of that uh, was the announcement or being recognized that Hayes will be the location for the 50th annual Kansas Shrine Bowl. At the airport, uh, APAC is currently completing a rehab project where they're re replacing various panels that have been damaged and need replaced. 27th Street is now open, um, as you all know, but here's some photos uh, in this month of them actually working on it. There are a few punch items left, but it's, it's obviously open for, for traffic. And then seal coat is happening around town. So it's a liquid mixture that fills in the fine cracks of the pavement and preserves the street for another five to six years or for a number of years. Um, last time these received these were about five or six years ago. So it's about a five year cycle. Um, they've been delayed a little bit because of weather. We were thinking they'd be done this week, but they'll be back next week. So it should be finished up soon. 
Also part of the street maintenance program for 2022 was the rebuild of the alley between 5th and 6th Street from Maine to Oak, or also known as the Bus Barn Alley. And from there, they went on to 22nd Street uh, from Allen to Vine. They finished the east half, and now they're working on the west half, and that should be completed, um, I believe, by the end of next week or in the next two, three, ten days, I think is what John said. Jay Court began curb and brick repairs at 7th and Fort Street. That should be wrapped up by the end of next week. And then the North Vine Street Corridor, the roundabout project, uh, continues to receive awards. It will be recognized at the American Concrete Institute Excellence in Concrete Construction Awards Gala on Monday, October 24th in Dallas, Texas. I think we should have gone. But it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> so. Stuff. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you Colin. Colin. All right. Hayes Happenings and Upcoming Events. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Melissa Dixon from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. A few items I want you to know in August that are happening. Big Brothers Big Sisters annual fundraiser, the Duck Derby, will take place at the Hayes Aquatic Park August 3rd. I know they've had some big grand prizes before. This year's grand prize is $10,000. So pay the $2 and buy your duck. Community Night Out will be the very next night at Hayes Aquatic Park with the Hayes Police Department. They'll have free hot dogs and hamburgers to the first 1,000 people, so encourage people to come out uh, and thank our local police department. The Box Lunch Summer Concert Series continues under the pavilion. Uh, August only has, instead of a first, third, fifth Friday, just has a first and a third. So those will be the last two concerts of the season. Uh, you can reserve a $10 lunch, and they'll have it for you when you get down to the pavilion. Hey, Melissa, you should point out that, in case they don't know, Jason Regler is our wastewater superintendent. I was just going to say, isn't that yes. Jason? Yeah, His absolutely. They're so good. They're very really good. talented. <laughs> yeah. They're very talented. That'll be it. It's a great lunch. Make you get out, take your lunch break, mm -hmm. and get a free concert. And right down the road in Victoria, we'll have Herzog Fest with lots of good food and music, August 12th and 13th. And two RPM Speedway races this month. I believe August 13th is bike night where they give bikes away to all the kids. That was supposed to be earlier this summer, uh, and it was postponed due to weather. Fort Hay State's Tiger Auction and Dinner is always a very large event for our community. That will be August the 20th. Dinner is served at 5 p.m. Tickets are $100 and includes dinner drinks and the live and silent auction. The Hayes Arts Council Fall Art Walk is usually the largest of their seasonal art walks. Uh, that'll be our Friday, August 26, 6.30 to 9.30, downtown Hayes and on campus. And I believe the Hayes Symphony will have an outdoor pops concert under the pavilion at 7.30 that evening. The Chamber of Commerce will host education appreciation. So let the educators in your life know this is a free dinner for them. That'll be at the Rose Garden Banquet Hall August 30th. And then if you have little ones, the Sternberg Museum has weekly activities, several days a week. Things are going on for kids out there. And if you have not seen In Search of Earth's Secrets or Sahara Sea Monsters, both of those wrap up in September. So get down to the museum. That's all I have. Very nice. Lots Thank of good you. stuff happening. Thank you. <coughs> all right. Commission inquiries and comments. Commissioner Barrick. Oh, it was nice to get a little bit of a break from the heat uh, this week. And tonight is the start of the Community Theater's Wizard of Oz that goes for the next couple nights. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if you uh, get a chance, everybody, I mean, there's always something cool happening in Hayes, and that's a the community theater always does a really great job, so take a chance. It's the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Very nice. Commissioner Jacobs. Oh, I just have a couple thank yous. First, I, I've expressed this before, and I'll continue to. Uh, I want to thank Michael Graham for his continued investment in housing in our community. He has done a great job with what he's done, and I don't think he's done yet. So we're looking forward to that. I also want to thank Paul Wurtenberg Construction. 27th Street is indeed open. My favorite part of it is if you turn off 27th onto Walnut, there is no big bump to go over anymore. And that's what makes me realize I'm on the new street. 
Um, it, it took a little longer than anybody thought it would, but, man, it's a nice street. I'm really glad it's finished. My husband wanted me to give his annual accolades to our city staff that does concrete work. He's been watching them again, and he thinks they do as good a concrete work as anybody in town, so he wants staff to know that. I agree with him. That's it. Very nice. Commissioner Musil. I also want to thank Paul Wurtenbruder and the uh, uh, community for their patience on 27th Street. It's a great street. I can actually drive home my regular route, so I, I appreciate that. Um, I also want to recognize um, Kelly Ackerman. She's a good friend of ours. Um, she was uh, recognized as Special Education Professional of the Year. And she worked for USD 49. It's a Kansas Association of Special Education Administrators. She's been doing it for many years. And, you know, a lot of those teachers, my wife, special ed teacher, go unnoticed. So it's kind of nice to see some local sure. people get identified for that. So. Mr. Burgess. Uh, just quickly, Larks won their pool play game yeah. today, so 8 to did. nothing. So uh, they had a, another fantastic season, 34-8, and eight, wrapped up last night regular season with a walk-off win and then went right to Hutchison today for their pool play and started off the series real well. So That's awesome. Good luck to them. Very Next nice. game is Saturday, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't have a whole lot. just want to thank you and city staff for all that they've done in the this interesting summer. Uh, hot, windy, and then every now and then we get a little bit of rain. Um, hopefully we get a little more. Um, school starts here, what, August 22nd for Fort Hayes? And then here in a few weeks for the little ones. So prepare yourselves for increased traffic, uh, a change of people's schedules. So um, with all the progress that's happening in Hayes, not just uh, people ripping up roads, it's truly progress and improvement in our community. So be patient, take your time, and uh, have a wonderful end of the summer. And there's an ad. Absolutely. We need to wish this big guy good luck Tuesday. Good luck Tuesday. He's up for election. For I'm not sure I want to wish that. Well, I don't, <laughs> but I wish him for himself. Absolutely. So, uh, I know he's put a Absolutely. lot of working going door to door, meeting a lot of people in our area. I've seen him out yesterday. Tried not to run you over, but you know, it's, <laughs> he's put a lot of work in. You deserve it, so I wish you the best of luck. And uh, get people get out and vote. There's a lot of important things on the ballot. So. Absolutely. Very, very true. Get out and vote, please. All right. Any executive sessions? Okay. And we will adjourn at 6.52.